and welcome to an apple a day with Dr. Amanda. I'm so glad you're here. So find a seat, maybe get some tea, maybe some apples and make sure you're comfortable. So this week we're going to be talking about a more sensitive topic, but it's really important to discuss and it's overcoming suicidal thoughts. And so I'm really honored to have Jacob Lynn Bloom here with me and he will be talking, sharing his story. Now just know, I think it's really important that during this, whenever talking about mental health, that I list any sources in the back um, on the description. So if you need to call or if you have anything, this is you or you're struggling, please know there's help. Please know that we're here to, you know, we care about you and many people care about you and we wanna make sure that you're safe, okay? So without further ado, I am going to introduce Jacob Lindblom, and he loves Jesus, and he has suffered with depression and suicidal thoughts over the years, and he'll share his story, but he also is really a person who believes in being really authentic and real about his walk and what he's been through, and so, and what he's overcome. So again, I'm really glad to have you here, Jacob. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, and it's a pleasure to, uh, to share my story and to be asked these questions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully it can help somebody out there, right? It's, it's all yeah. 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 All right. So again, if you're listening in audience, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend or subscribe on the podcast. The purpose of this whole show is to help people share their story and empower, empower others and know that we're never alone. Okay. So Jacob, what does it mean? To battle suicidal thoughts? So I think for me, before I go into the suicidal thoughts, I think it's important to note that I had struggled with depression. Um, even from a really young age, my mom had noticed that I struggled with depression. I think by the time I was like five um, and she had me in counseling, um, which I really didn't find effective for me. And I think it's important to note too, everybody's journey is going to be different. Not anyone's journey is going to look the same from anyone else's. And so how some people react and respond is going to be different than other people. And I didn't necessarily, my, I, I mean, my mom would say she's Christian and she claims Christian, but I wouldn't say I grew up in a Christian household. Um, I really didn't give my life to Christ until I was 19 years old, at which point I had gone through all of adolescence being uh, depressed and had tried to commit suicide very, several times. Um, when I gave my life to Christ at 19, uh, it literally was as if those things lifted off my life. Mm -hmm. And it felt like I was going through a process of wholeness, getting to know Christ. Then I was challenged in that um, I had a really uh, crushing heartbreak I went through when I turned 30 and it threw everything through to, to the wind. Um, and, and in that season, that's when I started becoming suicidal again. And, and for me, um, because I had struggled when I was younger, I knew the protocol. I knew what they told you to do. I knew what I was supposed to do. And I knew that I didn't find it effective then and so I kind of bucked the system. And so for me, going through the suicidal thoughts, it looked like me thinking there was no hope. It looked like for me that there, there wasn't anything worth fighting for in life. And knowing at the same time that as a Christian, how can I commit suicide? Like, would God have mercy in that? I mean, these were the thoughts going through my mind. And, and not knowing necessarily that he would. And I don't have answers to those questions. I just, I know that it was one of those, I was in a place in my life where the only thing that was keeping me from taking my own life is the thought in the back of my head, could God possibly have mercy on this? Um, and that was really the only thing at first that kept me holding on. Um, yeah, yeah, so I, got, I, I don't know if that answers your question, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, thank you for sharing. First of all, sh thank you for sharing about, you know, your journey about when that depression happened when you're five and that, you know, it was really, you almost felt like pretty much hopeless until even 19 where you had that shift. 
But then again, right later after that heartbreak, right? Or some type of life event that sort of almost yeah. was a setback, right? In your life, you're like, oh my gosh. And I really appreciate your vulnerability. You know, even for people in the audience, they may be people who are believers and walk with the Lord or don't, right? Or don't even, you know, have that. And I just want them to, you to know, you know, people to know and hopefully that, yeah, like it's, you know, we, this is something that we can all, we may all, right? Have some type of yeah. battle. And I really appreciate your vulnerability with that. When you said about the hope you had was, wow, like, is God going to have mercy at the time? But that kept you, right, from yeah. doing something against yourself. And that was that one part of hope or even like that pause in your life. So again, you know, I really appreciate you sharing that. And then in terms of the suicidal thoughts, I know you gave some examples, but what else did that battling suicidal thoughts look like or sound like in your life? So for me, initially, the biggest thing was uh, well, could God even have mercy on this? Um, and just because of the nature of the way things happen for me, um, when this heartbreak happened, and this was not like, you know, like a six month thing or a small event, like this was three and a half years of me. I don't remember going more than 10 minutes without the thought of God, please just take me home. I, I don't want to be here for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. That's a really long time. Mm -hmm. I would go to sleep with that thought. I would wake up to that thought. And so it kind of, it, it was a, it was a process, but it was a transition of like, could you have mercy on this? And that came and went. Um, but then it started, I just started to retreat to myself. Like I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to talk to God. Um, it wasn't even a, I'm mad at God. It was I'm so, I, I'd been so disappointed and so disillusioned, I didn't even know how to even start to try to talk to God on this issue. And so I just, I stayed to myself. I went to work. Yeah, I was pretty, like, I, I went to work and stayed as busy as I could at work. And then when I was off at work, I would normally go to the bar, not to get drunk, but I knew that if I had a drink or two, it would make me sleepy. And that was enough to just go to bed until I had to work again and I didn't have to think. And that was the hope, you know, I didn't want to have to think, have time to think about anything. And so it actually, it, it, it actually ended up being me entertaining the idea of actually trying to pursue another relationship that went exactly the same way in a really expedited form, mm -hmm. but it was, like so much of a like, God, like, is this cycle ever going to stop? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'm trying to kind of consolidate things, but this was actually a cycle that was present in my life previously. And it didn't seem to change no matter what I had tried to do differently. And so when I got really crushed when I was 30, it, it was one of those things of like, I don't like, this was the very thing I was asking you to break in my life. And I've done everything I know to do things differently, but the result is exactly the same. And the process of how it happened is exactly the same. And I'm not understanding like what's going on here. Um, and so as I'm retreating from God and then now I'm in this new relationship and it happens the same exact way, I, I came to this point of just saying, God, I can't hold out any longer like either you have to step in or I'm not just checking out but I'm taking my life out and it was I'm probably within a day or two like his presence just broke in and I could feel him in a way that I hadn't in a long time but I actually made the step to ask like tell him you have to do something like in me um and and it really became a time of really learning how to hide in him again i mean i've been hiding for a long time but i've been hiding away from him um but I, it was learning how to hide in him and even as i started going through that process and that was probably a year maybe even a year and a half of that alone and then I just remember I was messaging a friend. 
I hadn't talked to in a long time and just wanted to know how he was. And he responded to me, hey, man, I'm actually not doing too good. I've been having a lot of thoughts about taking my life. Wasn't a Christian friend. And uh, as I was, as he was sharing this, I'm trying to process, like, how do I even respond to this? Because number one, I know he's not a Christian. And number two, I can't say that like necessarily my approach was the best. I don't know what to tell him. I know that I'm 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 finally getting out of that season. And and I really just felt strongly that the Lord was he in that moment, he started speaking to clearly to me on how not only myself, but so many seek their peace and their rest from death. They think that there's a solace, there's a rest, there's a peace that will be found in that. But the Lord was very clear with me. He's like, you know, intrinsically, you know, that's not true because Every time we lose someone to death, there's something that screams in us and, and rails oftentimes against him of like, how can we lose him? There's, it's not natural. Death is not natural. We were never created for death. That was part of the curse. It was part of the fall. But what has happened is the enemy has tricked us. You know, Jesus said he came to give us life and life abundantly. And so when, when we, it seems as if the things in our lives are that, that would bring abundant life are being stolen, killed, destroyed, then oftentimes we, we come up with this false I, ideology or this lie that we believe that says, well, maybe there's, there's hope and there's rest in death. But Jesus is the life. He's the way. He's the truth. That's the only thing. He's the only thing that brings life and peace. But, I mean, I could, like... There, there are days where like that thought comes into my mind again, and and I like now I can say it when that when it happens, like I'm like uh, -uh. like there's no peace in death, like there isn't. Like if we're in Christ, we know that there's coming a day, and that's awesome. But when we get saved, we get saved until eternal life, not until eternal death. There's no rest in your death. And that's the lie that so many of us believe. I've, I believed it for far too long. You know, are there really difficult days? Are there really trying times? Still, absolutely. But I still know that my peace and my hope and my, my like, hope for life and life abundantly, that comes from him. And he came so that it could start today, yes. But we're still in a battleground, unfortunately. You're sharing your journey and, you know, what it looked like and what it sounded like to you, you know, like your thoughts are like those, you know, years where you constantly had those thoughts and then where, you know, God was showing you, okay, like in this, like, is this really bringing life? Right. And even for your friend, when you're like listening to your friend, you're in a situation where you know what this is like, right. And you know, your friend may have a different view and then you're like, okay, God, where's, can I have wisdom? You know, what do I say? I'm going through this. Like, what can I say? And I think that's powerful because, you know, people in the audience, again, you know, may or may not know, you know, Lord, or they, you know, they may be struggling and being like, where's my hope? Or like, yeah. how can I, you know, like where you talked about, like, sometimes we think, oh, well, this just all ends is done, right? Versus like the up, uh, other side of it where there's life, you know, even though there's that struggle that you're talking about yeah. to understand that. And that's like part of that overcoming that you've been working through. So I think that's, you know, absolutely what, you know, you're, yeah. you're talking about, which is raw and real and helping people know that, you know, cause we don't share this enough sometimes, right? Like we say, Oh, yeah. you know, even as believers, <laughs> Oh, we're good. And people see that. And yes, there is joy and peace and righteousness and the Holy spirit. That's what we have inside of us life, but getting there, right. And understanding that oneness, like you said, are not hiding, you know, yeah. like trying everything else, but God, and then even learning how to be right in that relationship with God and how he is, you know, that piece that takes time, you know, for us to undo that old mindset. So I think that's absolutely, you know, realistic and authentic. Yeah. One of the verses, I, and sorry, I don't know the address of the verse, but you know, where Jesus says, you know, those of you who are weary and heavy burden, come to me and I will give you rest. Like that's one of the biggest things, you know, that 
I'm learning really is true. You know, that, yeah, like I'm, I'm still learning through this process and just still learning through this whole complete like mind shift of like, no, they're really outside of Christ. There's no rest and peace. Like death won't give you those things. You know, it is the exact opposite. Um, and we, we know it, we know it, we know it when we lose people to death. We know it even when we lose an animal to death, yeah. you know, that there's something not right with this. Like we, like, yeah. we know something's not right with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, if I'm honest with myself, I can't speak for everybody else, but I, I feel like when I hear the response, oh, well, you know, they're in a better place now. Mm -hmm. If I don't know that they're with Christ, no, I don't. And, and I feel like most people say it to make themselves feel better. Yeah. I could be wrong, but that's how I feel when I hear that, that, that response. Um, and, the, and the truth is, it's because there really is not going to be that peace and rest unless you are in Christ. Yeah, and that's a good point. And, you know, and I've always been, you know, I, I've, I feel like this, this topic, you know, because again, with thoughts and people always be like, oh, like, you know, I think it's such a hard topic, Jacob, because so many people have joked about mental health or like anything with thoughts because everybody has them, like, because yeah. people don't realize that there's a spiritualness to life, right? So we have our thoughts and God speaks to us and guess what, you know, people may not want to understand that, but there is an enemy, right? And there are yeah. things that happen now, you know, that's destroyed, but still tries, you know, to, you know, do stuff. So people get afraid or like our wounds sometimes, you know, speak within us, you know, and so people get afraid if they're having any type of thought because they're like, Ooh, are people going to think I'm crazy? Are, you know, am I going to be put away? Are people going to stop being my friend? And, you know, there's been such a stigma and I feel like we're at a point now where we have to stop the stigmas, you know, and yeah. be able to talk to each other real, right? Like, Oh, things are great. Yeah. Yes. You're blessed, but you know, how are you really, you know, how are you really feeling? You know, what are you really thinking? And, you know, I think that's a big missing part, you know, not even just with faith, but as a society, you know, we, we do that. And it's like, and the bigger part, which is not part of this topic, but I'll go there because we're here is that the biggest piece is that mental health and trauma, and I'd say sexual trauma has impacted our families and generations. So long. the big issue is that people don't know what to do about either. And why is it? Why is the voice stolen from people all over the countries and nations? And why is this an issue everywhere? Because we don't talk about it because we don't know what to do because it, all of us are impacted. Like, even if we haven't been in our generations and in ourselves and in our memory, whether or not it was us or other people, that has happened. And the cries out of injustice and the, you know, harm that was done across generations is still here. And that, Jacob, I believe, I know it's not the main focus, but it's kind of like heavy on my heart right now is the issue, is that these big issues are really all of us if we stopped and realized that we are fighting against each other in half of these things, instead of fighting together for each other, right? And realize that the real enemy is not flesh and blood, not humans, but it is the stuff that surrounds us. And if we know, and we can be kind and love each other, we can help each other, you know, and get stronger. And I think that is a huge issue. And I don't know if you agree, and that might be a different topic thing that we're talking about, but that's really what is happening. No, I mean, I think that's, um, that's a really big thing. And uh, I, I don't, as I was like walking through my journey, I don't think that was something I could have really contemplated much at all. Because um, like I said, I, I hid away. And because I was familiar with like all the things that they're supposed to tell you through counseling and all that, like, I really, I kind of was like, no, I like, this might sound strange, but like, when people would come up and tell me about like, you know, I understand, like, you know, I've been through something similar, like, my response to them was, like, I don't care, like, I'm sorry that you had to go through this kind of pain, like, I don't want to go through this kind of pain, but knowing that you went through it doesn't help me, but, like, and I know that's not the best response, but that's how I felt about it, um, and so, in a lot of ways, I did stay to myself, you know, because of that, I knew the kind of responses I would get out of that. Um, but then, you know, there are stigmas. And I think some of them that you get are, well, you know, they're fragile. Um, and as a man, like, you definitely don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that was 
just as offensive, just that kind of thought towards you. And I would imagine it's probably is towards a woman, but like, you know, in, in our culture as a man, you're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to be able to take it. You don't want to ever be called fragile. But then also uh, there's the idea sometimes that you're seeking attention, that you don't really mean it. Um, and for me, like in the back of my mind, there was this thought of like, no, I'm not going to seek any attention. If I do this, no one's going to know. I'm just going to go for it. And so, but in terms of what you were saying, like, even as you're, like, you were sharing it, like, there is this, the secretness and this quietness about it, um, quite honestly, because we as the body of Christ really haven't learned how to do community well, mm -hmm. and to talk about these things, whether it's, you know, mental health or sexual abuse or even just sex in general within the church like yeah. we don't know anything about it so we just like all right well the urge is there so we go after it when we should be fathered and mothered in these things and taught by our brothers and sisters but because nobody's done these things for so long nobody actually has the answers to it yeah um, but if we were in true community and i'm so as i say this i want to just say i i i definitely believe there are valid places for counseling <laughs> But when we're in true community, I feel that most of the things that modern day counseling does for us today would actually be taken care of, a, taken care of amongst ourselves. Um, because when we learn how to relate to no, another well, then a lot of these things are worked out just in relationship. Mm -hmm. Is mentally ill or if there's sexual trauma, mm -hmm. um, that is a really heavy burden to carry with someone it's heavy to carry by yourself but i think for a lot of people they're just like i don't know if i can handle all that yeah and so there's almost like this dismissal of it's not that big of a deal mm -hmm. um where it's a really huge deal and then you go around damage for the rest of your life because nobody is willing to kind of carry the load with you and, and help you through the process of learning how do i get rid of this, how do I forgive? How do I process all this? How do I repair this damage that's just been done to me? And, you know, maybe your community too. I mean, it really depends, but like, I think community is a huge thing that we, we really need to focus on and learning how to love ourselves and therefore being able to love our neighbor, or our brother, or our sister as ourselves. Um, cause if I, I can't love myself and then I love you and I can't love myself, then I can't love you well either. So, yeah. And that's really uh, important. Yeah. And I like how you talk about community, Jacob, you know, and even in that, you know, I know we, we sort of got into that topic, but it's a big one and it's a big, oh no, it can't be linked, but I know even counselors now, cause I'm in the field of counseling right now, um, getting, you know, my, um, LPC after all my field of education, but for greater purposes, you know, God's given prep purpose for me. And um, I think I love that you talked about community. And I agree that in the church, that's so important. I also want to know that for people out there and, you know, those who are on listening, it is important because I do think there is community, but there are times where like, if you've had complex trauma, um, it's so hard and it totally, you know, especially people who've been trafficking all kinds of nightmares, right? Things that we, you never, it never was your fault and it really mattered. And, um, you deserve to have a healthy childhood, right? And that was stolen. And so sometimes to get there, there's a lot of what we would want to say, right? That it's that mental health piece. A lot of it's the pain, the not getting rid of emotions and not understanding and even your mind playing because you're like, why am I seeing things? And it's scary because you just are, your brain is trying to like hide what you really, your body remembers. And that's from, that's a big thing. The body keeps score. So I agree, you know, Jacob, and again, like for some of you out there, yes, community is absolutely great. Sometimes you need that in your walk, you know, where you need that extra technique, but also having the right counselors, you know, that help you get to those roots. Um, and again, like having those, those avenues, but I agree, you know, when you're talking about us being open, you know, and learning, I love what you said at the end, just like, it's true. Cause you know, God says, love me. And he gives us love to help us love him and give passion. And it's like, we're learning how to love ourselves so that we can equally love others. So like God, wants us to love him first, right? We have to learn and then us to get love for us. And it's like, it's equal. It's not us loving ourselves more than others. It's not us loving others more than ourselves. It's less loving us, us and them 
equally knowing we are all equals in God's eyes and we all deserve love. And I think that's a hard concept sometimes, you know, because it could be inflated either way. But God, God's view is you get love from me, learn how to love yourself so you can love others like yourself, you know, not more than, but like, you know, yourself. And I think, and obviously, you know, that can be a process. So I totally agree with you. And then in terms of um, when you're going through this, I know you talked about different years with this. Did you have, and I know just to go back, you brought up points about being nervous or being like, okay, I'll just keep this to myself. And I also want to make one other point about what you said, because it's actually important for the audience and people. And I think as we go through life, we don't always know how to handle it. When people are sharing their story or talking about something that happened to them, the best thing you can do is just listen. And the best thing you can just do is say, um, that's hard, or I'm here, or I'm listening, or nothing. Because at that time, like you were saying, Jacob, most people do not, like, yes, they want to know you're not alone. You know, maybe they'll hear that, but um, they don't want to hear your story at that time. What they want is for you to just listen. Like, that's an act of love. And I know over the years, we probably all had to learn that. You might mess up, so don't beat yourself up out there. You know, I've done it myself, uh, you know, over the years when I didn't know, right? When I was still learning how to love, you know, get, receive love from God and learn how to love me to love others and still learning the process of loving myself and others, you know, and growing in love every day. That's my hope. But I, I just want you to know out there, you know, the best thing, I don't know if you agree, Jacob, is just having someone to listen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but in talking about that, that's where I'm going to circle back is, did you have people that you could confide in during any of these really hard, dark times in, when you were in your thoughts? Um, <laughs> it's kind of a complicated question. Yes. I, I think there are a number of people I could have talked to, um, but because I didn't want to talk to people, I, I didn't. Um, and that's, that's really where I was. Like, I was fortunate in that there were probably a number of people I could have talked to, um, during those moments. And I know that when I finally, like, was able to take my, like, come out of my cave, um, and just kind of share with some of my friends what had been going on with me, um, that, you know, all, all of them were basically like, well, you know, I'm, really sorry to hear that uh, you know I wish you'd said something mm. and you know I I know all of them were authentic and genuine in that um but I, I also knew where I was and I I didn't I didn't want to um and I think for me too um because at that point like especially right before um everything kind of blew up in my life um I considered myself to be a fairly strong Christian um, and I thought that even if things did not go well with another relationship that although it would be disheartening I wouldn't go through that kind of process again mm -hmm. um, and and so for me it was really a shameful thing especially with my Christian friends mm -hmm. um, to even bring it up um, because I was finding myself in this place again when I thought like I was not perfect, but at least I thought I could handle it better than I had previously. Sure. Um, and so um, that was that was part of why I, you know, stayed mute on the subject then, you know, at least with at least with my Christian friends, that was a big thing for me personally. Um, but yeah, I, yes, I did. I just was not willing to reach out. You pick, you picked up, and I appreciate you sharing about that, you know, about, okay, I just hit it, but I think you brought up a big, big, big point, and it hits everybody. The secrecy, what really causes secrecy is shame, and other people knowing if they're shame, because all we keep teaching each other is shame if we keep secrets, right? Whether it be mental trauma, like mental health, the trauma, the secrecy and right organizations or the power struggles and all this stuff that really isn't meant to be. We're meant to be taking care of each other. And yeah. unfortunately, shame 
right? And that happened just even with the first time when Adam, with Adam and Eve, like shame breaks communication, right? It causes blaming or helping us feel like, oh, no one will get it. Or I have to keep this heavy burden, right? Because other people feel shame or I feel their shame for me, right? Which is not, it shouldn't even be that way. And I think shame is such a huge issue and it breaks so many relationships, right? Because that's shame breaks intimacy, like period. And I think that's what happens, right? And that's even with God, like shame breaks intimacy. And that is what, when we break that, right? When we break those patterns or even like in community, we stop shaming everything because that's why people don't come out when they're struggling with horrible things because it's shame, right? That's the big blinder. I think that, of, that people right away go to, and I think you brought up the biggest word, right? Even I think, because shame causes us to keep hidden or keep quiet or other people are like, nope, you can't talk about it. Like we know something's there, but we can't talk about it. And I think that's powerful. Like, I don't know if you agree, but shame keeps us from seeking help. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was, that was probably, it wasn't even like seeking help, but even having an ear to listen to amongst my Christian friends, like I just, I didn't want to talk about it. Um, and like amongst my non-Christian friends, I could, I could talk about it more freely, to be honest. Um, because there, I mean, I'm, I work construction. So, you know, most construction guys are pretty, I mean, they're, they don't share their feelings, but they're pretty raw and real about stuff. So, you know, I could, you could say whatever, you know, or you can be next to someone at the bar and you can tell them and, you know, they'll, Mm -hmm. they'll share their sorrows too. Um, but like, you know, for me being like, for me, to be honest, a lot of it might've even been personal. Like I, because I felt like I had at least reached a place where I thought I had been healed, um, that there was healing in my life. Um, and so for me, like, even as like, I'm walking out healing now, like I am much more, I don't, ever feel like I thought I was really prideful about it, but I thought that at least that that was gone in my life before. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I'm just like, you know what, who knows what's still there. Um, and so, you know, I, I just approach things much more gingerly than I did before. Yeah. So, yeah. No, but that's, it's really good. I, you know, I appreciate that. Cause again, and I think it's important to know, you know, we want to be open. I think no matter where you're at, like hearing each other. Right. And I think that important piece of communication that you really said, like sometimes when you're sharing it, you felt shamed in some communities and not others. And that shouldn't be that way, right? We have to be able to figure out how can we have people come there, you know, still obviously if we're, you know, enough faith to be able to do that, but walk with people and also hear them and then also model, right? But also be honest and go through it together, right? And and walk that way. And that that takes wisdom, right? And it takes, sometimes we make mistakes with it, but if we're willing (laughs) to learn from each other and hear each other, I think it'll help a lot. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and then again, I know you talked about finding support, you know, in different places. Um, and you talked about barriers, you know, that you've had and especially with, you know, family or friends or just how, you know, even people, right. Shame and other thoughts. And I guess, you know, even that stigma, I know we talked a lot about it. And so I guess just, you know, as we're concluding or looking at these last parts of it, you know, I just kind of want to ask, like you say, you had a friend say, I came to you right now. Right. And I said, you know, Jacob, I've been struggling with suicidal thoughts and I just have no hope. And I feel like it's just, it's just whatever. Like I just am done. Like, you know, death is going to be a better, better ending for me. You know, what would you say or do or like what would you say to that person or what what would that look like um so you know i think i'm really just going to kind of reiterate what i was sharing before um with the friend who had shared with me that he was you know having suicidal thoughts and ultimately um i did end up sharing the gospel with him and i and i just told him i was honest with him i was like listen um because when we we had met about a year previously mm-hmm. Um, I was doing some backpacking around and, you know, we met in Canada and I happened to be in Canada a year later. I just thought about it. I was like, "Ah, I should text him. And um, 
so as I was thinking about my response, I, you know, my, all I could say was, all right, well, you know, this is not really what I was planning on saying to you, but I feel like I need to. And I ultimately, I said, you know, the only thing that got me out of it because I was just coming out of that season about the time I met him um, was, was Christ. That was it. If it wasn't for him, like there's, there's no explanation uh, for me, for me being here. Um, and, and it really came down to um, me realizing that there, like, there isn't hope, there isn't rest in death. Like we like to think that there is, but the truth is the things that bring us to that place of, of being suicidal, of being in despair is the death around us. You know, death, you know, death in relationships, death in whatever, whatever those things where there's a lack and insufficiency, that's where death exists mm -hmm. because the enemy's goal is to steal, kill and destroy. That's what he does. It's not what the Lord does. And, and a lot of times, um, of like, we see this within the world all the time, you know, why does the Lord allow this, that, or the other, whether it's rape or, or natural disasters or the death of this person and not a single one of those things is because of God. Um, that is not his nature, but because but we are in a fallen world, God may permit some things at most times, but, but to be honest with you, most of it comes from the enemy and, and that's what Jesus came down to show us how we were to reverse it or to go to him with things. I don't understand all of it. I know it like, like I probably pray for 200 people and I might see five healings, but the fact that I see five is enough for me to know that he's still good and he's still true. And I want to see the 200. So, you know, I'm going after that because I realized that the life is in him. Yeah. So when I realized that he's not the cause of those things, or even when we talk about natural disasters, Jesus said, speak to the storm. Oh, stop. So I like, and I know that gets into a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah. Um, but most of what happens in the world today is because we're not being who we were called to be. Yeah. Um, and so we allow death because we think it's just natural, but it's not. Right. Um, but when, when these things are stolen from us and we are seeing the, the death of things around us, we start believing, well, maybe death is a, de a better place. Maybe there's rest, maybe there's hope there. And so my response to him is that I know you think that there's hope in those things. I know that your, your, your thought process is that there's a rest and peace there and that it might be better than this life here. But the truth is what you really want is life and life abundantly. And that's what Christ came to offer. Um, like it won't be better on the other side. Mm -hmm. Death won't bring it. Death will actually bring more of what, what you hated here. Right. So here on this earth is as close as I will ever be as a Christian to hell. Mm -hmm. But on this earth, is as close as you'll ever be to heaven on this earth if you're not a Christian. Right. And so, yeah, there are some horrible things here, but realizing that no, our, our, our rest really is in coming to Christ and our peace is really in coming there. And yeah, that's, I, that's all I got. Thank you. Well, in terms of your friend then, I'm curious, what, how was his response? So uh, it took him a couple of days, but he actually, his response was, I'm actually curious because these were things he'd never heard of before. Oh, yeah. Um, and I feel like that's a lot of people. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's most people, like, we have this presentation of the gospel of, like, go to Jesus and get saved. What does that look like? And I don't really feel like that's even the gospel. You know, why is Christ the hope of the nations? Yeah. What are the nations hoping for? Most of them are looking for hope and peace and justice. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what Jesus is. He's all those things. Right. You look in scripture and, and, and that's over and over and over again. You know, it talks about justice. Yeah. He is a God of justice. He hates injustice. He talks about it all the time. Absolutely. You know, he is a God of healing. 
and he and you see Jesus doing this, and Jesus came down, limited him, limited himself to the abilities of a man, so that he could demonstrate what we're to do, yeah. not what God can do in a man's body, but what we can do when we partner with Him. And so we realize, like those things we've been struggling with, at least physically in our bodies, like they can be healed, you know. And and He is He is hope, but if you've never heard that that's what he does and who he is and that's what we're, what we're called to, and that's what the kingdom of God is, you know, then, then all you can equate the gospel message to is, oh, well, just put your faith in Jesus and you'll be saved, whatever that means, you know, I, I, that's my feeling on it. But like, what does that mean? I feel like I, for me, um, just realizing that like, okay, like I say these things, but what does it mean? And realizing that that's why I do have a hope. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and that's the hope. And I love that, you know, and a lot of times, sometimes we have that all twisted. Cause it's like, when you think of God, God is like the earth is his footstool, right? He's all over the place. He's omnipotent everywhere, everywhere. And he's like all pure, but he can handle, right? And, and Jesus and, and, and even the Holy Spirit can handle any of our hardest times. And, yeah. you know, the biggest thing about it is you're right. Like God loved us so much that he was in love with us to bring us to him, yeah. but that, you know, we are overcomers because of what Jesus did. And Jesus overcame even before he chose to go on the cross because he knew that's what the redemption was. And he chose, and he, even on his last breath, that's what I love what God's been just showing me over and over again. He won in that too. He won in the whippings i mean the suffering will never know but he won in that he when he took his last breath holy spirit went everywhere you know broke down the veil and jesus went through the gates of hell and he was victorious then he just got the keys to say i'm giving dominion back to my children right yeah. and that's what i love like that was a new slip for me where god's like oh yeah like amanda you got to get this go through the cross like it's so much powerful and then because jesus overcame and he went through death to overcome and he doesn't you know we can overcome before the death like he actually gave us life before death to say i we are you already died i'm giving you life and then we overcome by his blood that is powerful and sets us free from all darkness and all that stuff but we also overcome we're overcomers in our story so those of you you know wherever we are we're all called <laughs> we all have superheroes we all have something on the inside of us that no one else has so that's what the battle is because god brought goodness to the kingdom and he wants all of us to rise up to be who we're called to be to make the earth right full of life and make the earth you know green and make the earth different and work together as community that's what we're called to be, walk with god and each other and when we can learn how to do that and love each other and not have offense, that's the kingdom. You know, the kingdom is the good news that Jesus did for us so that we could live in victory. And that's how when we're in our hardest, you know, maybe we have different, you know, things that we've gone through, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony. And so you, Jacob, sharing this, you know, and us sharing about our testimonies brings other people hope and life and knowing hmm, you know, like, yeah, like I've never known that, right? I've never known who like Jesus is and that he has so much more than just being this, you know, a lot of times we think, oh, he's not really here. He's everywhere. But again, like us not hiding or us like actually coming to him. And a lot of times it's like getting past all the idols or relationships or, you know, ourselves, like getting past ourselves, getting past all the things we think are going to give us anything. And when it's all taken away, right, it kind of shows how, whoa, like, what do I have? Right. And sometimes that happens. Yeah. God's like, I want you to know, like you lack nothing in me. And that takes a journey and of itself. Um, so anyway, but no, I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Cause I think that's a lot of it, you know, that gospel. And I'm glad that your friend, you know, is able to hear that and at least, um, under, you know, start to learn. And so Jacob, you know, just really for our last part, I don't know if there are any resources. I know you talked about the Lord or anything that helped you during your time or if there's one wisdom tip you want to tell the audience? Uh, I, honestly, resources, just the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I think if anything, if you're in a place to hear it, uh, don't hide away like I did, because I know that just compounded the issue. Like if you're if you're gonna hide away, learn to hide away in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, because he really, he's the one who can soothe the pain 
when it just seems unbearable. Um, and it, it's not a magic fix that it's going to take it away right away, but at least, I mean, he really is the best friend that you can have in helping you process through things or just um, at least making it so you can you can stand another day until things start getting better and he can start taking you through the process. And, you know, it, if you can bear it, then, you know, stay in community too um, and be open with others. And uh, for those who are listening, like do just that, listen and just be there for them. Good. Well, thank you. So again, audience, you know, I am going to have across the screen um, numbers, you know, you're not alone, you know, we care about you, you know, um, I'm sure we may not understand, but we want to give you hope today. And again, that number's there, please, you know, call your life matters, you're incredible, you're important, there's no one else like you on this earth. And you do matter. And I know um, if you're in that pit, you may not want to hear any of this, right? But all I, all I pray is that you something stuck out to you today and that you you can another night, right? Another day and that you can call and that hopefully you have somebody there for you. And if, and if not, you don't have a safe person that hopefully you can call on the phone and you'll have somebody who is on the other end that cares and wants you to be able to live and have hope and, and get what you need. So again, you know, be well, be blessed, and we will have, I'll have numbers on the description, and tune in for more this week. I'll share a little bit part of my own story in this area, and what God did for me, and I know I, um, we had Trina earlier in the week, so we have amazing Jacob, thank you, and Jacob and Trina, and all of us can relate to some of these things, but Jacob, I appreciate your time, and again, if you, if anybody, I don't know, if anybody did want to get a hold of you by chance, would you be willing to share your email or how would you like okay. them to get a hold of Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You want me to share it now or do you? I have it. So I'll put it. I just want to make sure. So I'm going to put Jacob's number on, you know, if you're men out there, you know, women, I'm sure there might be more men that might say, hey, and you don't know who to get a hold of, you know, or you just need somebody, you know, Jacob is willing to give his email as well as another resource. So again, yeah. take care and thank you, Jacob, for your time. And be right. welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.